Ladies and gentlemen, before I start with my speech, I would like, uh, for the sake of uh, being precise, to say that I am former prime minister, not the president. <laughs> it really, it. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything for this uh, discussion. But if someone is reports. I wouldn't like this to go with the name of president because there is a former president which might be offended. Okay, now let's uh, move to my speech. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, it is uh, my great privilege to participate on the ICD annual conference, especially because uh, this year this conference uh, is held uh, in the framework of the Berlin celebration of the 25th uh, anniversary for the fall of the Berlin Wall. The, wall, the fall of the Berlin Wall 25 years ago and related events in the period 1989 till 1991 call for analyzing this period and concentrate discussion on three main issues. Those issues are, first, did we utilize and materialize given chances and opportunities? Second, where we are now? And third, what is the way forward? And I will try to contribute to the answers on those questions in my speech. As to the first question, I believe that it is fair to say that uh, the events in 1989 till 1991 marked the triumph of liberalism, capitalism, and democracy in the world. German reunification that followed the fall of Berlin Wall was logical outcome and I would say justified the reward for Germany after the decades of responsible international behavior, its social market economy, and its efforts to build a strong and secure Europe. These events that occurred by 1991, fall of the wall, reunification, collapse of the USSR, presented a unique opportunity to establish a consolidated global governance, worldwide free trade zone, a new partnership between West and East. In other words, these events have produced a historical opportunity to create a unique space of prosperity and liberal order that would have made a very big difference. Of course, in the last 25 years, a lot of the opportunities have been utilized. Both Europe and the world are much different now than before. European Union is much bigger, 29 member states, more consolidated and regulated, common currency introduced, and the discussion on fiscal policy harmonizing is underway. In, uh, on the other side on the, of the globe, China entered into economic reforms and produced spectacular progress, recently becoming the secondly ranked world economy. Also, the other formerly poor performing countries have significantly advanced. Many people would argue that we can be satisfied with the progress that she achieved so far. Although I generally support this statement, I personally think we could and we should have achieved more. In my opinion, we made mistakes in three areas. First one, in Europe. The speed of integration of member states into European Union, if the goal is United States of Europe, is slow and the level of integration is still very low. Europeans introduced a common currency euro but failed to create functional banking and fiscal union as well as a federal budget. Generally, the current state 
of art can be estimated as a failure to create a more solid monetary union in the European Union. In the process of harmonizing different interests, it became clear that having the same currency and monetary policy for rich, technocratic and capital intensive can economies like Germany and for economies of the Southern Europe will not be without some problems and adjustments. Countries like Germany tend to favor high interest rate and strong currency, unlike, for example, Spain and Italy. The common currency disallows these power countries to apply an independent monetary policy and thus manipulate their currencies to become more competitive. Second, the West-East relation. The fo we fail to fully embrace countries from all former Eastern Bloc, including Russia. The mistrust is still present and unfortunately increasing in the recent months. Mistrust is the word that can apply also for the relations among alliance. Remember the spy affair that we that was the headline news only several months ago. Also, political positions on certain world important events are not taken jointly and impartially, but on the basis of political attitudes, attitudes of two military superpowers. Good example is separation of the ethnic territories from sovereign countries where the support or opposition is related to the political interest rather than generally accepted approach. Even some steps of the Euro EU enlargement, for example, premature accession of some countries, many people read as the marking of the sphere of interest rather than a necessity for quick integration. This, however, is not only European problem. It is obvious that short shortedness originally prevailed in 1991 in the relation, relationship between the USA and Russia. Third mistake is the position of the United Nations. The mistrust between the United States and Russia and accordingly the fact that there was no reset between the two powers was resulting in the failure to establish new global governance and revitalize the United Nations. This not, does not mean that UN should and can be transformed into a multilateral panacea capable of solving, or so, solving all the world's problems overnight. <clears throat> However, it is clear that we cannot afford to let UN devolve into a high-priced forum for sophisticated debating society for professional diplomats. These main mistakes are responsible for the quality of the current world we are living in. So, where we are now? We are now at the, at the end of the post-Cold War era that began with the collapse of the Soviet Union. New international reality that emerged in 1991 was held up by three main pillars. The first one was the United States. The second was Euro Europe promising to emerge ultimately as the United States of Europe, the enormously wealthy and powerful region counterbalancing the United States. And the third one was China. 25 years ago, uh, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the USA is still looking for its optimal role, and EU is even less assertive on the international scene. China, the newcomer on the world scene, is gradually becoming more and more important, but also more and more dependent on the world market. China's large industrial production exceeds China's consumer demand. As a result, China must export. The recession after 2008 cut heavily into China's export, severely affecting GDP growth 
and threatening the stability of the political system. Nevertheless, even now, China's GDP annual growth rates are exceeding 7%, which is a dream of many other countries in the world. In order to give additional impetus to the GDP growth, China is entering next new reforms, stressing the need to phase out the traditional growth-oriented development model. The country's le uh, leadership is emphasizing the importance of growing GDP through innovation and quality upgrades rather than through increases in size and scale. Finally, in addition to the three pillars, current wor world is characterized by a new position of the emerging markets consisting of number of developing countries. The emerging markets become increasingly essential to the health of the global economy, particularly some big countries which are experience, experiencing rapid increase of GDP growth. What is the way forward? Nobody can be sure what will be further development of the current situation in Europe and in the world. Therefore, there may be many scenarios equally legitimate. Here is the one which I am offering. And I believe this one is the best for all of us as well as for the new generations that will replace us. Firstly, I think the EU, EU has to fix its union. The devastating social, economic, and political effects of the crisis might continue to be felt in Europe for years if there is no consensus on a new functioning of the union. The Europe will have to address the structural, structural issues by the means of economic adjustment and compromise. One of the ways to preserve coherence of the political and economic union in Europe could be to increase the redistributive capacity. This would provide for more capital investment in southern Europe, thus enabling them to be more competitive by building better transport and energy infrastructure. The new mechanism should reconcile two different economic visions of Europe. One, of austerity and independent supranational supra institutions, and the other of political governments and demand-driven growth. That can be achieved only through federalization and further integration of Europe. Secondly, current political relations between U EU and USA on one side and Russia on the other are very unfortunate unfortunate and the escalations might lead us to a new Cold War. Are we building the new iron curtain, a curtain while celebrating 25th anniversary of the collapse of the old one? The problem can only be resolved between partners, not between sides trying to optimize individual positions. This is where cultural diplomacy should help. The responsibilities lie on current politicians of all sides. The world is expecting them to find a long-term ter sustainable solution. Thirdly, the world needs to ameliorate the global governments not only to prevent future political and economic crises, but to deal with the challenges of sustainable development and of the climate change. In this regard, I believe that in spite of all its imperfections, the UN is the sole international institution of indisputable legitimacy that can become the functional center of harmonizing mankind's response to any threat. Of course, UN need to reform to be able to play a key role in the 21st century. All key challenges in the 21st century will be of global nature, so multilateralism and global cooperation will be indispensable. 
the UN must take full responsibility, the UN must take full responsibility first and foremost for new sustainable development goals in 21st century in terms of defining them, implementing and monitoring them. I am proud to say that during 67th session of the UN General Assembly, when my country assumed the presidency the, of the honorable body, the mechanism of cooperation between UN and G20 was created. This may constitute a constructive step in enhancing the global governance. Having in mind current political situation in Europe, it is important to prevent a relapse into a new Cold War. My country will assume a presidency of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe in 2015 and is willing to play a constructive role and to work hand in hand with Germany, which will succeed Serbia and assume the presidency of the OSCE in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not naive. The world is very complicated and everybody knows that. The interests are very complicated, that also everybody knows. However, those facts do not prevent me of advocating and calling for a better world. The current problems should not restrain us from celebrating the fall of the Berlin Wall or to underestimate, uh, underestimate its gigantic importance for the dem democracy and the better and secure life in the world. However, it is in human nature to seek, to ask, and to expect for more and better. Thank you.